Katrina Roundtree. <laughs> yeah. The Oxford Dictionary defines bounce as to spring back from a surface in a lively manner. I define bounce as an indoor trampolining madness place that may result in bringing up late night dinners. <laughs> I am so uninspiring. Now, recently we took a trip down to one of Melbourne's biggest indoor playgrounds and took part in the new craze, trampoline dodgeball. Have a look. Whatever these guys are following, it must be fun. But it's more fun to learn and partake in the global phenomenon of trampolining. Since the late 1930s, when George Nissen invented the first trampoline in his garage in Iowa, trampolining has transformed from its humble beginnings in local school phys ed programs to a fully-fledged Olympic sport. These days, you'd be hard-pressed to find an Aussie who's never endured a trampoline injury from their childhood. Like a rite of passage for every child, the trampoline has caused its fair share of accidents and has evolved over the past 80 years into many shapes and sizes. Fast forward to 2013 and the humble trampoline has given birth to a new craze sweeping across Australia. When you combine this... <laughs> Easy. Anybody can do this. ...with this... <laughs> ...you get trampoline dodgeball. This week, we were joined by Season 1 cast member Susie Paterno as we took on regular Melburnians in a round of trampoline dodgeball. There's a variety of professional trampoline venues scattered all around Australia. But today, we were at the mother of all trampoline playgrounds, Bounce. We spent the afternoon revelling in a theme park made entirely of trampolines and foam pits. Trampolining really is the ultimate sport, combining an airborne adrenaline rush with a good dose of balance and lower body strength. The rules of trampoline dodgeball are pretty straightforward. Two teams of six players aim to throw soft balls at each other and dodge them at the same time. Or whilst bouncing around on a court made entirely of trampolines. When it came to the sudden death round between Rob, Susie and I, you'll never guess which scrawny-legged man was left standing. Trampoline dodgeballs, bouncing around like an idiot while slamming spongy balls at your mate's body. Priceless. So many softball jokes, so many PG restrictions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here to give you the down low on Web 2.0 with a little help from an old mate that he calls the YouTube. It is Duroc Yes, yes, it's me again. Here to save the day or save the show. <laughs> Keeping in with tonight's theme, you could say I'm like that other character as well who came from a faraway land to help out some inferior civilizations. <laughs> yep, I'm exactly like E.T. <laughs> And it's really expensive for me to phone home, too. <laughs> Where's home? Mount Waverly. Um, <laughs> but uh, this Lex Luzo over here is correct. Uh, I, I will be using the YouTube uh, to teach you how to become the life of the party. From my childhood parties at McDonald's 
to my scandalous adult adventures that inevitably ended up at McDonald's. <laughs> but I guess at least at those late night parties, everyone kept the dill pickle in. <laughs> Sadly, everyone. <laughs> Look, the first rule of partying is get into as many photos as possible. The second rule of partying is don't make cliche jokes about Fight Club. <laughs> the third rule is, seriously, don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> As I said, the most important thing is to is photos. Try not to look like these Hathis who are posing. My God, good stuff, good stuff. But what we need to do now, put the hands together. Get them up there. These type of girls are ruining all the rad parties out there. <laughs> They're really taking the phrase kawabunga and emphasizing the cow. <laughs> you don't know them. <laughs> to look cool in photos, you have to pretend like you don't even want to be photographed. <laughs> <sighs> Good times. <laughs> But that'll only make you look cool in the future. What if you want to look cool in the moment? Well, the best thing to drive those party girls wild is impressive feats of strength. What you do is you grab all of the ends really tightly and you pull them really hard. <laughs> <laughs> sure, big whoop. You ripped a phone book in half. Hey, Corey Feldman, the 80s called. They say you're still relevant. <laughs> the fact that that joke didn't do too well is a testament to how good the joke is. Um, <laughs> who uses phone books anymore? All the numbers I need are on this. Breaking this bad boy, bad boy is as easy as one, two. <laughs> I've become a prop comic. Good. Um, hey, Let's, yes, let's go to the next clip. This will show you how to be cooler. Wow, you're a real man, aren't you? You open a beer with your eye. Now if you could only use that grip to bend over and go <coughs> yourself. <laughs> The point is, it's lame to use your eyes to open beer. It freaks everyone out at the party. And using your teeth, that's kind of cool. Watch. Okay. Last but not least, it's posing. <laughs> I'm Dilro Jai Singer, and I'm bloody awesome. <laughs> Spot. He's a stalwart of the Melbourne comedy scene. He describes himself as a nice guy of comedy and that he's a really good warm-up guy and knows the definition of a cold opener. <laughs> Give the applause guy for Michael Connell! Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, <laughs> I'm doing my job. Uh, it's gonna be, thank you for that applause. It's hard sometimes being a comedian. I did a gig out in the country. They wrote about me in the, in the local paper. They put an ad in the, about the show. Uh, they said, comedy show featuring Michael Connell and funny comedy friends. <laughs> like, that's how they wrote it. Funny. In, I rang out the papers. It looked like a bit of a typo, a bit of a mistake. Maybe you want to have a word to one of your journalists. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, oh, yeah. Sorry, that is a typo. We'll run it again next week or it'll be sorted. I'm like, great. Following week I've opened the paper, they've written comedy show featuring Michael Connell and funny comedy friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's worse, right? <laughs> I, uh, I, I went 
to uni a couple of years ago and I, I, I studied philosophy. Uh, yes, I have, a, I have a philosophy degree. Uh, so I am poor, but I know why. <laughs> Uh, I did philosophy because I'm interested in like oh, I'm very metaphysical, intellect. I'm a wanker. Is what I, <laughs> that's why I did philosophy. I, uh, I, I, I thought I was very intelligent back then when I was a kid doing studying philosophy. Like the very first week of classes, I was sitting in the lecture theatre, and I was sitting there, and this guy walks in. He's like, "Oh, mate, mate, you're not in here." And I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Because like the self is just a projection of the ego, isn't it? You're like, no, no. I mean, I mean, this this class isn't happening, and I'm like, yeah. Because <laughs> reality is just perception, isn't it? He's like, no. I mean, this lecture's been cancelled. I am the cleaner. <laughs> and I was like, right. I am the walrus. <laughs> That's what we're doing here, right? He gave up, he just left, turned the lights out. I sat there for like 20 minutes in the dark going, this is deep. I'm learning a lot in this lecture. Um, I did learn the sort of things you'd think you'd learn in a philosophy degree. Uh, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Uh, now you might think the answer is yes, or you might think the answer is no, but what I learned is the deeper truth, which is knowing the answer won't get you a job. Like, that never comes up in job interviews. <laughs> you know, like, so, Michael, a tree falls in the woods, no one's around to see it. Does it still make a sound? Yes, it does. Sound waves still exist, even if there's no one there to perceive it. Well done. Welcome to Target. <laughs> that has never happened. Uh, I'm trying to learn Spanish. Uh, I do that because by uh, listening to a little Teach Yourself Spanish podcast on my iPod. And I do that when I'm traveling around on the train. And people say, isn't that, isn't that stupid because you're saying the words out loud? Don't you get people staring at you? I'm like, no, because all I do is I just hang around in the back of the train with all the other weirdos. <laughs> you know, I'm standing there going, me llamo Miguel, mucho gusto, en conocerlo. Some dude next to me like, oh, I'm eating pigeons. <laughs> I just blend in, you know. <laughs> like I'm learning Spanish, he's learning crazy. It's working out great. Guys, you've been a lot of fun. That's it from me. Thank you very much. Michael, come Thank on, you. right there. You can take, keep in touch with Michael Connell on the website, right there, michaelconnell.com. And you can follow him on the Twitters. What's the tweet he's for I, you? Uh, Michael R. Connell. Yeah? Because I R. Connell. It's grammar gold. Comedy gold. Oh. <laughs> Michael Connell, we'll be back at Live on Bow. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. 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 Yeah.